We started uh, from scratch, so just with one chair and one table, nothing more. And uh, over the years it uh, evolved. Currently we have two departments and four research groups in Exme. We have one for nanomedicines and theranostics. We have another department for physics of molecular imaging systems. We have a working group on biological mechanisms, particularly focusing on cancer progression and microenvironment. We have one group that works on image processing and uh, informatics. We have one group that works on uh, chemistry of molecular imaging probes, particularly focusing on optical imaging technologies and ultrasound contrast agents. And we have uh, one group that is focusing on therapeutic and diagnostic ultrasound. Theranostics, the combination of diagnosis and therapy, is crucial in realizing the potential of personalized medicine, of precision medicine. So the major benefit of Theranostics is, is, is actually that you can, first of all, see how much drug accumulates in a certain target organ, organ of interest, maybe tumors, and then directly see if it is enough for an effective therapy or not. In our department, we're working on the delivery of, of corticosteroids, anti-inflammatory agents within pegylated liposomes for the treatment of not only traditional inflammatory diseases like arthritis, but recently also for the treatment of cancers that are also treated with corticosteroids like multiple myeloma. You have also the option to modify the surface of those drug delivery uh, agents. So you can couple, for example, targeting moieties, which are specifically recognizing certain receptors. So instead of having only the passive accumulation there, might be then also an active part by the particle. I think molecular imaging can play a significant future role, also in terms of defining which patients we want to treat, based on imaging biomarkers. The definition of triple negative breast cancer applies to all the tumors which are histochemically negative for the expression of hormonal receptors known to fuel uh, tumor growth, such as estrogen, progesterone, and HER2 receptors. So triple negative breast cancer lack uh, clinically established targeted therapies, and for this reason, uh, they are harder to treat in comparison to other subtype of breast cancer. The aim of our research is to to uh, systematically characterize um, human sample uh, of triple negative breast cancer, primary tumors and in particular metastasis, so that we can identify uh, molecules for uh, targeted approaches uh, such as uh, immunotherapy. I learned about the power of imaging, molecular imaging, in the treatment of disease in our atherosclerosis studies. And of course, atherosclerosis is one of those diseases in which you really don't know what is happening inside the, the body of a patient. You just see the consequences eventually if the patient gets a cardiovascular attack, but then you're too late. Imaging can help get a better picture of what is happening in the patient and are we reaching the target sites with our nanomedicines? And what are those nanomedicines doing there? Magnetic particle imaging was initially uh, invented to be applied in cardiovascular application. The tracer for magnetic particle imaging is uh, super magnetic um, iron oxide particles. So it's a, um, it's a tracer that um, has a single magnetic domain. So this is really important for MPI. It has a certain size best 30 nanometer to 25 nanometer in size. Unfortunately, it couldn't get larger than this, otherwise we are losing the single domain property of these particles. SPOs are super paramagnetic iron nanoparticles. This is actually iron oxide core with one, one particle, so to say, with the right iron oxide core with different shells around it. And this core influences, or this core in the magnetic field has different movement, so to say in MPI or MRI, and that gives us signal. So in the external upright field, this little magnet behaves differently. 
And I think another really strength of the Institute is uh, the development of PET uh, systems inside MRI. Volkmar Schulz is here the, the main driving person, which was the first fully digital PET insert uh, that can be uh, used in a clinical MRI system. PET and MRI being combined has a great advantage because PET delivers molecular information. I'm getting information about the metabolism of the body, for example, uh, and MRI has a huge potential in measuring uh, anatomical information or, uh, for example, also functional information, but not on molecular level. So, and from that point of view, they are extremely synergetic. The challenge in simultaneous PET MRI is um, that for the PET acquisition we need a lot of local electronics. We are measuring very sensitive uh, low light flashes uh, with uh, very advanced sensor technology. So these are very, very small uh, electrical signals. And if we put this uh, detection um, um, arrangement into an MRI, uh, the MRI has um, a very strong magnetic field, friendly to any electronics you put inside. So, and that's one of the main challenge to really uh, have both modalities operated at the same time, uh, which are influencing each other. I'm very sure that uh, PETMA will broadly make its way into the clinics. I think our recent bigger achievements are in the field of also super resolution ultrasound where we try to track single micro bubbles and get really very high resolved images of the tumor vasculature uh, which also allows us to extract multiple new imaging features that can be used for therapy monitoring and tumor characterization. We are not only mapping the microbubbles positions, we are also assigning to these microbubbles their own velocity and direction. And therefore, as a result, we are able to visualize the tumor vascularity in a high detail and we are able to extract novel parameters for the quantification of the tumor vasculature. If we want to gain further information on the alterations in tumor angiogenesis, we, we use um, molecular ultrasound imaging with target-specific microbubbles. For further um, analysis, we use predominantly histological analysis and we perform in vitro studies in order to gain a deeper insight on the biological mechanisms that drive tumor progression and regulate the interplay between the cells. As a physicist, there are many questions which um, need to be answered. Um, especially in the field of instrumentation. And we have the informatics group that really helps us to extract the biomarkers out of the images, to quantify the images, to make it more user independent. But this group also strongly works, for example, in improving the reconstruction of optical tomography systems that then are again used to monitor the biodistribution of nanoprobes. We are working on uh, new devices with better detectors. With, which generate more information, and but we also work on the uh, re reconstruction software using better uh, numeric modeling, better reconstruction, for example, using high-performance computing with uh, GPU acceleration. Automated image analysis, for example, will help in uh, providing more efficient but also more reproducible and credible analysis of all the image data that we generate. The World Molecular Imaging Conference and the European Molecular Imaging Conference, these both are the, the main conferences our people go to. There you hear most of the new results, the new encouraging findings of other groups. You have a great chance to exchange knowledge. My experience at the WMIC are quite nice because you have, as a young researcher, you have the ch finally the chance to actually meet people you might only know from their names from reading papers. In addition, you might meet several students which are also working on similar topics as you are, so you can actually get new ideas. WMIC is a conference I really enjoy because there are so many different uh, disciplines really coming together. This is one of the few conferences in the world where we see people from physics, people who really apply new methods, people who are really interested to explore new domains. Uh, and this is really so fascinating about the WMIC to see everything uh, coming together. The main strength of XME 
are people which are working in this group, which are coming uh, from all over the world and are having very different cultural and academic backgrounds. So I think we all learn a lot from each other. This is our lab. 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 <laughs>